solve problem on balancing of three cylinder radial engines by using the concept of direct and reverse crank given question a three cylinder radial engine running at 1500 rpm is having its axis at 120 degree to each other the stroke is 120 mm and each connecting rod is 215 mm long the mass of reciprocating parts is 3 kg per cylinder determine the primary and secondary unbalanced forces acting on the engine Let us understand given question with the help of diagram. This is the question for balancing of radial engines and the three cylinders are placed 120 degree apart. We will show the three cylinders and these are the line of stroke. So this line of stroke we have to show at 120 degree apart from each other. I will give the numbers. This is the cylinder number 1, cylinder number 2 and cylinder number 3. All these 3 cylinders are connected to the common crank. So here is the crank OC and this is the crank pin C. Now we will join the center of each cylinder with this crank pin C. All the cylinders are rotated in the same plane and therefore in case of balancing of radial engines there is no any primary unbalanced couple as well as secondary unbalanced couple. So for the question of balancing of radial engines we have to calculate only primary unbalanced force as well as secondary unbalanced force. Now we will first find out what is the primary crank position theta. So for to find out this primary crank position theta we have to make the two columns that is for the direct crank and reverse crank. So what is this direct crank? Now we will understand with the help of this diagram. Here is the crank OC. And now we will consider this crank OC is rotated in clockwise direction with angular velocity omega. Now suppose we will consider this cylinder 1 is at 0 degree then cylinder 2 is at 120 degree. Now the angle in between 2 and 3 is also 120. So with respect to this one what is the total angle? This angle is 240 degree. Now if we measure this angle in clockwise direction then we have to consider with positive sign that is cylinder 1 0 2 plus 120 and cylinder 3 plus 240. So we will mention this in the table. So first column is for cylinder there are total 3 cylinders. Now primary crank position theta we have to mention in the direct crank cylinder 1 is at 0 degree. 120 degree and 3 to 40 degree. Now in case of the reverse crank we have to consider the anti-clockwise direction. So for this anti-clockwise direction we have to take the all these angles negative. So for the cylinder 1 we have to take 0 degree. For the 2 because direction is getting changed that is it is in anti-clockwise direction we have to take minus 120 and for 240 we have to take minus 240. Now we will move to the next column secondary crank position 2 theta. So we have to take the reference for the previous column. So how to write this direct crank position? So we have to just multiply with 2. So for this direct we will take 2 into 0 that is 0. 120 into 2 that is 240. And 240 into 2 that is 480. So these are the direct secondary crank position. Now in case of reverse we have to take previous reverse primary crank position. So here is 0 degree. Then minus 120 into 2 that is minus 240 degree and here minus 240 into 2 that is minus 480 degree. So this table is getting completed. Now we
we will move to calculate primary unbalanced force. And for that we will prepare here two diagrams for the direct crank position and reverse crank position. Now with reference to this diagram we will plot the position of the cylinders. So here this is the position of the cylinder 1 in both the direct and reverse crank. Then here is the position of the cylinder 2 and here is the position of the cylinder 3. Now each cylinder is at 120 degree apart. Now in direct crank position what is the direction of this omega that is in clockwise direction. So we have to show here. And in reverse crank position direction is in the anti-clockwise direction. So we have to show this anti-clockwise direction for the omega. Now if we refer this table then for cylinder 1 for direct and reverse crank it is at 0 degree. So we will show here this M is at 0 degree. So at the each cylinder that is for 1, 2 and 3 we have to put mass M by 2. So for this direct crank I will show here the mass M by 2 and for the reverse crank also we will put here the mass M by 2 at cylinder 1. Now for the cylinder 2. Now for cylinder 2 there is the rotation. Now this cylinder 2 is rotated in clockwise direction at for 120 degree. So I will rotate this cylinder 2 in the clockwise direction. And this direction is that is clockwise and rotation is for 120 degree. So we have to mention here 120 degree. So what is the position that is the final position after rotation of 120 degree. So here we have to show this. So I will show this and mass m by 2 is placed. So we will show here mass m by 2. Now in case of the reverse crank position here minus 120. Now what is the direction in anti-clockwise direction. So for this uh, cylinder 2 we have to show rotation for minus 120. So we will show this. So here is the rotation and it is minus that is anti-clockwise and that's why here is the minus sign. So I will mention here only 120 degree. Now here at the original position of 1 there is the mass m by 2 after the rotation of minus 120. So I will add here m by 2. Now we will move to the cylinder 3. So cylinder 3 for the direct crank position is rotated through 240 degree. So here is the initial position of cylinder 3. Now it is rotated in clockwise direction. So 240 that means this 120 plus this 120. So I will show here the rotation. And we will show this angle 240 degree. And this is the final position. So final position is here. And that's why we will show here mass M by 2. Now in case of the reverse crank here for 3 it is rotated 240 degree but in anti-clockwise direction. So this is the initial position. Now after rotating 240 degree in anti-clockwise direction I will show here the final position. So here is the final that is 120 plus 120 that is 240 degree. So this is the final position and again mass m by 2 we have to add this position. So I will add here mass m by 2. Now if we observe the two diagrams for direct crank position and reverse crank position then here after rotation here this m by 2, m by 2 and m by 2 all these three masses are placed at 120 degree apart and that's why direct crank position is balanced. But what about the reverse crank position? For reverse crank position all these masses that is the masses for cylinder 2 and cylinder 3 are gathered at the position of the cylinder 1. And that's why here this is the unbalanced reverse.
reverse crab position. Now we will calculate primary unbalanced force. For that we will add all these masses that is m by 2 plus m by 2 plus m by 2 multiplied by r. So r is the crank radius. But here the stroke length is given. So this L is equal to 2 multiplied by R. So R is equal to L by 2. So we will take the value 1.2 divided by 2 and omega. So here value of N is mentioned in the question. So to calculate omega we will use formula 2 pi N by 60. And then we will take its square. So when we calculate this then we will get the answer 6661.9 Newton. Now we will calculate unbalanced secondary forces and for that we will prepare here two diagrams for the direct crank position and reverse crank position. With reference to this diagram we will plot the position that is the initial positions of the cylinder. So here is the position 1 for this direct crank as well as reverse crank. Then here is 2 and this is 3. Now we will refer these last two columns for the secondary crank position to theta. Now if we observe for cylinder 1, both are at 0 degree. So mass m by 2 is placed at each cylinder. So we have to show the mass m by 2 at cylinder 1. Now for the direct crank, the direction of rotation is in the clockwise direction and we have to show. And for the reverse crank, direction is anti-clockwise direction of omega and we have to show this. Now for the cylinder 2. So here is the initial position of the cylinder 2 and it is rotated to 40 degree for this direct that is in the clockwise direction. So what is its final position? So here this this angular uh, difference in between 2 to 3 is 120 and 3 to 1 is 120. So 120 plus 120 that is 240. So we will show the rotation of 240 degree in clockwise direction. So here is the final position and we will show the angle 240 degree. So again we have to add mass m by 2 at this position. So I will show here m by 2. Now in case of reverse crank, so if we observe, we have to rotate this 2 with 240 degree but in opposite direction. So this angle is 120 plus 120 that is 240. So we will show here rotation in anti-clockwise direction and we will show angle 240 degree and here this is the mass m by 2 we have to show. So I will make here circles and m by 2. Now we will move for cylinder 3. So in case of this direct crank position it is rotated at 480 degree. So how to calculate this 480 degree. So here is the cylinder 3. Now we have to show the rotation in clockwise direction. So first we will make here I will show this so this 120 plus 120 that is 240 and again we have to add the 240. So again this 120 plus 120 240. So we have to show in this way. So here this total rotation of 480 degree is getting completed and here is the final position. So we have to add mass m by 2 for cylinder 3. Now in the same way we have to move the cylinder 3 for reverse crank. So for the reverse crank we have to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So how to rotate this? So here is the initial position of the cylinder 3. Now we have to rotate 120 plus 120 that is 240 and again 120 plus 120. So it is total angle is 240. So here 480 degree. Now we have to show this is the final position. So we will show here mass m by 2. Now if we observe these two diagrams for the direct crank position for the secondary forces, the masses, all the masses
means m by 2 for each cylinder are gathered at position 1. And that's why this is the unbalanced direct crank position. And in case of the reverse crank position, the masses after rotation are placed at 120 degree each other. So we can say that this is getting balanced. Now we will calculate secondary unbalanced force. So what is the formula? Fs is equal to. Now we have to add all these masses which are gathered at this one m by 2 plus m by 2 plus m by 2. Now instead of r we have to take r by 4n where n is the obligate ratio and we know that n is equal to l by r. So what is this l? L is the length of the connecting rod and it is mentioned in the question and r is the crank radius. And instead of omega we have to take 2 omega bracket square. So here omega that is 2 pi n by 60 and we have to take this whole square. So when we put the values then we will get the answer 1859.17 Newton.